that uh, Prime Minister Thatcher has sent a message to, uh, to Washington, and I suppose uh, other heads of government are trying to do the same. Very much so, Frank. Uh, the news traveled uh, just about as fast as you can expect overseas. It traveled in two stages. First, just about the shooting. And then, of course, when it was realized that the president himself had been hit, it traveled at a much greater pace here in Germany, in Britain, in Israel, for example. All of the television and radio broadcasts were broken into with bulletins from Washington, and in many cases with the pictures of what happened outside the Hilton Hotel. And the reaction of Prime Minister Thatcher here at number 10 is identical to the reaction that has been expressed in our two other major allies overseas, France and Germany, here in Europe. President Giscard was on television tonight during a campaign appearance. He, like Mrs. Thatcher, expressed first shock, secondly, great sadness that this should have occurred, and then very quickly sent messages off to Washington to the president, wishing him a speedy recovery, reassurances of the friendship of France and of Great Britain, and a great hope of a speedy recovery and a quick return to work, and great sympathy for the families and the White House staff members involved. That same message came just a short while ago from Chancellor Helmut Schmidt in West Germany, and we've learned just a short while ago, too, that Prime Minister Begin in Israel is, in fact, drafting a statement at this moment, which will go off to Washington, reflecting very much um, what I think is clearly a universal view overseas, shock, sadness, and, and great concern about the president's present health. Peter, uh, if you'll hold on for just a moment, I have one item of information here that uh, I must interrupt you for. Uh, we have talked to a doctor at the uh, George Washington University Hospital. He says that the president is undergoing exploratory abdominal surgery and that they have not yet located the bullet. Uh, this is a, a doctor at the hospital uh, in a position to know. Now, when we got the word that the president was in surgery, that was at 4.05, we were told then he had been in surgery for some time. It's now 4.22 or so, so he's been in there for quite a while, and the last word we had is that exploratory surgery is underway, and they have not yet located uh, the bullet. Uh, but uh, as the Secretary of State said, the president was conscious uh, when he entered surgery. And Peter, I don't know whether you're, you heard it all, but we understand, too, that the president walked you know, from his limousine into the, uh, into the hospital. It, yeah, well, that, that, ahead, that's what Peter. surprised people overseas, Frank, and why the shock was sort of double-barreled, because, in fact, people did see the president first in a still picture at the car looking very alarmed and then disappearing out of frame, out of the picture to go into his car, and when it was realized he was hit, it was, uh, as I said, a double-barrel shock. It's interesting here, Frank, that the reaction always is twofold. Um, I recall back, in fact, we were reminded here in Britain tonight of the attempt on President Ford in Chicago because already people overseas begin to dwell, as I can assure you they will, with much greater intensity in the next couple of days on how this is a pattern for American presidents. The news commentator on the independent television news here tonight pointed out that Gerald Ford had had two attempts on his life within a month and, and then made it clear to the American people that an American president cannot hide behind his security wall and there'll be a lot of talk about that overseas in the next couple of days. Distress about the president first, of course, and some concern about an America in which this kind of thing does appear to happen for each president almost. Yes, and there ought to be, and there'll undoubtedly be a lot of talk here too, and I suppose we'll hear a great deal about, uh, what is the line, guns don't kill people, uh, people kill, but uh, well, we don't know that anybody has been killed, and I, uh, I don't mean to, uh, to suggest that. The, uh, Thank you, Peter. We'll be coming back to you throughout uh, the day and uh, evening, I suppose, as uh, this story develops. We're going to go back now to Susan King at the White House to see if we got any more information. Susan? Yes, Frank. Uh, it's a very quiet mood here at the White House. We just had, as you've been saying with Peter, Secretary Haig and Mr. Allen, who's the National Security uh, Advisor to the President here in the press room. They are in the Situation Room at this time, along with all the Cabinet members who were alerted through Signal, which is the White House communication system, immediately after it was learned uh, that the President was shot, even before that, that there were shots at the Washington Hilton. And so the Situation Room is now in a crisis management stage um, and ready to deal with any issues that would come up. Secretary Haig, as you probably know if you were watching, said that he is now in command of uh, the White House. Uh, until the vice president comes back. And of course, there's a intense communication system between the vice president's plane and the White House as well in that situation room, so they are in communication with him. Again, the uh, Secretary of State did confirm that the president is surgery, as we reported uh, a while ago. And it appears the lung uh, is one of the things that was punctured by that bullet. There had been a bullet. Uh, I was told by a source here that, yes, they were told that. They were also told that the president's heart was not affected by the bullet. Uh, 
person who told me that said, though, I just keep hoping and praying that, in fact, is true. But for uh, we reporters who spend um, every moment with the president outside of the White House, just in case, this is a very surreal moment because that just in case has actually happened. Frank? Yes, it has happened, Susan, and the last word is that the president is still in surgery at uh, George Washington University Hospital. Exploratory surgery is underway. Uh, doctors uh, attempting to locate uh, the uh, bullet that struck him this afternoon. Uh, there is also great concern here, of course, for Jim Brady, the White House press secretary, who appears to have been uh, much more seriously wounded. His condition was described as uh, very critical, and Secretary of State uh, Haig confirmed that it was uh, quite serious. We believe he was uh, a victim of a, uh, he was hit in the head, a gunshot wound in the head. It all happened uh, uh, <laughs> less than two hours ago, how things changed so rapidly. Less than two hours ago, the uh, president was coming out of the uh, Washington Hilton Hotel. When this happened, the gunfire rang out, and four people were hit. The president, a Secret Service agent named Tim McCarthy, a District of Columbia policeman whose name is Delahanty, Thomas Delahanty. He is said to be in serious condition. We don't know about Agent uh, McCarthy's condition. And Jim Brady, the press secretary, was very critical. The president, who is said to be stable, and in good condition, but is at this moment uh, still, so far as we know, undergoing surgery at the George Washington University Hospital. Uh, for those of you who've just joined us, you, uh, uh, to bring you up to date on just how this all took place, we'll replay this uh, videotape of the event as it occurred, as I say, just about two hours ago. The president has just come out of the... Uh, we've slowed the tape down now to make this slow motion. The president has... Uh, just emerging here after the uh, speech that he gave to the AFL-CIO, waving to the people on the other side of the driveway. As you can see, there are police all around, and there are Secret Service agents all around. Uh, but uh, there also was somebody else there, and there's no way of knowing uh, who... Uh, there the shots ring out. And you see the one agent right behind the president immediately dove for him and other agents swarm all over the suspect. Our cameraman, Hank Brown, uh, got these uh, pictures of the, uh, of the suspect, or at least the man who was in custody has uh, been identified as uh, John W. Hinckley, said to be of Evergreen, Colorado, 22 years old. He is in custody. The uh, vice president uh, has now left Texas. He left about uh, seven minutes ago, as a matter of fact, and is en route back to Washington, uh, D.C. right now. He's in the air. And, of course, the communications are, uh, are constant between the uh, vice president's plane and uh, the White House Situation Room. These are still pictures here of the, uh, the police subduing this... Uh, suspect, a man named Hinckley. Now, I've just been given a note that tells me that the doctors are operating on the president in the area of the chest now. That comes from the hospital, does it? Yes. Well, a short while ago, we were told that uh, exploratory surgery, uh, abdominal surgery, was being uh, carried out. And now we understand that they're operating on the president uh, in the chest area to uh, locate the bullet that struck him just about two hours ago on this rainy Monday afternoon in the nation's capital. The president is said to be in stable condition, was conscious when he went into the surgery, uh, was talking, and uh, that's all we can tell you right now. We'll go back up to Capitol Hill and our correspondent, uh, Britt Hume, who's in the Senate uh, press gallery. Britt? Yes, Frank, uh, things are very subdued and quiet here this afternoon as the senators, like everyone else, await further word from the hospital about the condition of the president and the others who were injured. Senator Cranston, the assistant Democratic leader, was in here, here in the uh, Senate uh, radio and TV gallery just a short time ago to make a statement. And he called the shooting um, a deep tragedy for Mr. Reagan, uh, for James Brady and the others who were hit, and he said it was profoundly tragic for the country uh, he went on to note, as he put it, that we must find a way to stem the violence. Of course, uh, 
the subject of violent crime has uh, been much in the news uh, even before this incident, Frank, on the covers of the national magazines and so forth. Senator Cranston also described the scene to us a little bit here uh, after the Senate floor had been largely vacated when word of the shooting came and the members of the Democratic Party uh, filed into their cloakroom and stood grouped around a television set. Senator Bradley, he said, was standing at the controls as they switched back and forth uh, from one uh, network to another to try to keep abreast of events. Uh, uh, Senator Cranston mentioned that Senator Kennedy was there. Of course, he lost two brothers to assassinations. And Senator Russell Long was there, whose father was shot to death. Uh, all of them, he said, were silent. Nobody said much. He said Senator Gary Hart uh, expressed uh, dismay when word came that the alleged assailant is f apparently from Colorado. Uh, at the moment here, though, Frank, uh, things are very quiet uh, and subdued, more so than... Uh, more so than usual, of course, as, uh, as the Senate, uh, like everyone else, awaits word from the hospital. Frank? Thank you, Brett. Yes, of course, everybody's almost in a, in a state of shock, I suppose, uh, if not literally, uh, at least figuratively, over uh, what has happened here today. We have here a report on uh, the reaction of two of the president's uh, three children. Uh, Maureen Reagan uh, was described as in shock and upset by a uh, spokeswoman for KABC Radio in Los Angeles. See, Maureen was in, in Washington here for the gridiron dinner. I saw her there the other night at uh, the annual uh, party that is given by the uh, Washington Press Corps. Uh, it's always it's a tradition in Washington where people, uh, they kind of roast government officials. And it was a very, very happy evening with uh, everybody taking uh, you know, a lot of liberties in uh, making fun of the president and his economic program and uh, making fun of the Democrats and so forth. A lot of uh, very funny songs, and the president seemed to be enjoying it hugely. It was a long evening. But I saw Maureen there, and she was, uh, she's all over the papers here today, too. And she was her usual ebullient self. Apparently now she's gone back to Los Angeles. She said she's in shock and upset. Uh, she also, Miss Reagan, was also surrounded by Secret Service agents and moved to a safe location, according to this spokeswoman, for KABC Radio in Los Angeles, where Maureen Reagan is a uh, talk show uh, hostess. And let's see, Michael Reagan, uh, who is the uh, president's adopted son, is said to be in a state of shock and very upset. Uh, this comes from a man who is the president of the Southern Pacific Title Company in Santa Ana, California, uh, where uh, Michael Reagan, who is uh, the father of the president's uh, only godson or uh, grandson he is a vice president of pacific title he was in burbank california on business when he heard of the shooting and uh, the spokesman said he did not know if the president's son planned to travel to washington and a spokesman for patty reagan davis uh, said uh, she had no immediate announcement on her reaction or whether she will come to washington too we know that mrs reagan has been at the hospital uh, since very shortly after the president arrived there she was notified to uh, Immediately, I suppose, probably even before he got to the hospital, they got word to Mrs. Reagan, uh, because there are communications in the president's limousine, too. I suspect he probably, uh, he probably uh, shouldn't say that, but I just suspect that he wanted her to be notified right away, to be told that, <clears throat> that he was all right, because he was uh, conscious, and uh, as we've learned, he got out of the car at the hospital and walked in, uh, whereas the other three people who had been... Uh, Hurt were obviously unable to do that and uh, had to be carried in on stretchers. Uh, Jim Brady, the White House press secretary, is said to be in very critical condition. We've had no word on his condition other than that for the last uh, hour and a half or so. And a Secret Service agent, uh, Tim McCarthy, we don't know the extent of his condition. The police officer is said to be... Yes, we know. I, I've just been told to remind you that uh, Jim Brady is very critical condition. And the, uh, the Secret Service uh, agent, uh, we don't know the extent of his injuries either. Just a little more than two hours ago, it all happened. Uh, at the uh, White House right now, the uh, Secretary of State, uh, Alexander Haig, is, as he said, uh, in command, in control of the government. Uh, that is not because of any assertion of power, because that's the way it is. He is the ranking cabinet officer. He is the first among equals in the cabinet. And the vice president, who of course uh, would take over, uh, uh, is in the air right now on his way back to Washington. He was in Texas to deliver a speech this afternoon. He was of course immediately notified 
and he's returning now to Andrews Air Force Base. We expect him to be back here in a couple of hours or so, really. As the Secretary of State said, uh, he's in command of the government while the, uh, the president is undergoing surgery, but uh, he would uh, ne necessarily check with the vice president if any decisions had to be made. And it's important, too, I think, to remind you that the, uh, the Secretary of State said, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, no alert of any kind is contemplated, uh, that our allies, our friends around the world have been notified of the incident and also of the president's condition, but that no measures requiring any military alert have been taken. And as the Secretary of State said, uh, none is contemplated at this moment. Here's a, an item on uh, the vice president. He was supposed to, uh, to address the Texas legislature today after giving a speech to the cattle growers there in Fort Worth, and of course he canceled that. Uh, the Texas Secretary of State, George Strake, is quoted here as saying, I'd say he looks like he's in total control of himself. He's referring, of course, to the vice president. Uh, he met with uh, the vice president aboard Air Force Two when it stopped to refuel at uh, Austin, Texas, and the plane took off from Austin uh, after four o'clock this afternoon for the uh, three-hour flight to Washington. Here, we are now told that former President Nixon in New York is speaking uh, with Mrs. Reagan on the telephone right now. Is that right, uh, on the phone? He's not here in town, is he, uh, in Washington? He has called Mrs. Reagan, who was at the hospital. As I said, uh, she went there uh, as soon as she learned of, uh, of the uh, shooting and uh, was described as uh, calm and collected, but uh, understandably upset, or said to have been crying. And uh, that was some time ago. Now, it is 4.36, 4.36, 4.37 or so. We were told the president was in surgery at uh, 4.05, and at that time we were told that he had been in surgery for some time. We later learned that uh, abdominal exploratory surgery was conducted in an attempt to locate the bullet. And then we were subsequently informed by a doctor at the George Washington University Hospital that the uh, president uh, was undergoing chest surgery. Sam Donaldson is now at the hospital, and we're going to go to him. Sam, have you learned anything more? Well, Frank, there's been no official announcement here, but unofficially it said that uh, Mr. Reagan has been in surgery or was taken to surgery uh, shortly after 3.30. As you know, the only thing officially said here is that the president uh, was shot once in the left chest and uh, the bullet was still in his body when he was brought here to George Washington University Hospital. Willis King happened to be in the emergency room and Mr. Reagan uh, came in. What did you see, Mr. King? Well, at first, when it first came up, the uh, two ambulances came with a police car in between them. And then Mr. Reagan's car came in. And the Secret Service walked in and kept saying, get out, get out, get out. And everybody was looking into what was going on. Then he told us to get the hell out. And we saw his gun and everybody got up and started moving. Then by that time, when I got to the door, Mr. Riggins walked by and I was close enough I could have shook his hand. Now let's go back. Uh, was this walking in, was the president actually walking in under his own power? No, there was two uh, Secret Service on each side and the president was holding his right, holding his left chest up on his arm. But he was not carried in. He was not on a stretcher. No, he wasn't on a stretcher. He was walking and he was being held by two Secret Service men and he was holding his left uh, side. Yes. Did he say anything? Was he talking? No, they was talking to him and he was bowing his head, you know, like the motion, yeah, or no, something like that. But he was conscious? Yes. Where did they take him, Mr. King? Well, last time I saw him, they took him around the corner. I don't know where they carried him out there. Then. Did you see any blood on his jacket? No, I saw the blood on his shirt. The way they had his coat, it was open. You could see a spot of blood up on the head, up was on it, his left arm. Was it a small, small spot or large? Well, it was running down his uh, shirt. And they took him to the emergency room? Yeah, they did. About what time was this? 2.15. A little later than that. And you just happened to be there? Yeah. Your uncle is in the hospital, you say? Yes, he is. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Willis King's uh, eyewitness report of the president uh, walking in here to George Washington University Hospital uh, around 2.30 or thereabouts. Uh, under his own power, being uh, helped, of course, by Secret Service men, and the president holding his uh, left side, and that, of course, is the side where it is said that he has been shot. So to recapitulate, Frank, all we can say uh, uh, here is that uh, he has been shot, and uh, uh, the bullet was still in his body. Unofficially, it is uh, being said here that uh, Mr. Reagan went into surgery sometime after 3.30. Uh, uh, the extent of the surgery, or for what purpose, is not known. 
but no official statement has been made here at George Washington University Hospital. Frank? Thank you, Sam. We've uh, received word, uh, not official, but from, uh, from doctors there at the uh, hospital that, uh, as I reported, the exploratory surgery was uh, conducted, uh, abdominal surgery, we were told, first, and then we understood that the uh, surgery was in the uh, chest area. As Lynn Nofziger uh, said, uh, the, the president was struck under the arm, but missed his heart. We subsequently had a report that uh, one lung had uh, partially collapsed. If he went into surgery at uh, shortly after 3.30, he's been in there about an hour. The Secretary of State said uh, that uh, he was conscious as he went into surgery. And of course, we must, we must keep in mind the fact that uh, Sam just uh, pointed out there with the uh, gentleman who happened to be in the emergency room when the president arrived, he walked in. He wasn't carried in. He got up out of the car and walked into the uh, hospital, which is an indication that uh, his condition was not uh, as serious as it might have been. Who is waiting? Bill Greenwood at the White House. All right, let's go back to the White House. Bill? Frank, there is a great deal of activity in the White House Situation Room, which is serving as a clearinghouse for information not only on the President's condition, but on possible uh, attempts by adversaries of the United States to take advantage of the confusing situation. But we must underscore the fact that there has apparently been no indication worldwide that any of our uh, uh, adversaries are trying to use this for mischievous purposes. Secretary of State Haig said a few moments ago that certainly the Soviet Union uh, is not trying to take advantage of this domestic situation. But despite that, there is a very uh, detailed eye being kept on world crisis centers by officials here at the White House, being led by Secretary of State Haig, the Attorney General, the Secretary of Defense, and the Secretary of the Treasury. As for information on the condition of the president and uh, his news secretary, the other two victims, we know very much less than the people at the hospital. Sam Donaldson uh, seems to be getting details faster than they are coming here to the White House. We uh, have talked to several former uh, friends of, of past administrations who have come here to the White House, and they do not yet know uh, if the president is out of surgery. The Prime Minister of the Netherlands just arrived across the street with a motorcycle escort. He was scheduled to meet with President Reagan tomorrow, a meeting that presumably will be canceled. Back to you, Frank. Yes, of course, the, the meeting will be canceled because, well, I shouldn't say anything uh, that flatly, but uh, the, uh, the President is still in surgery, and I would assume that when he comes out, they'll give him a chance to rest before he actually has to resume all his official duties. Uh, the Secretary of State, uh, whom uh, Bill Greenwood mentioned, uh, is there in the White House. He went there along with the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Treasury, many other government officials immediately, and they've been in the Situation Room. The Secretary of State made a brief appearance a short while ago in the press room uh, to brief reporters, and we have that tape. We'd like to replay it for you now. I just wanted to touch upon a few matters uh, associated with today's tragedy. First, uh, as you know, we're in close touch with the Vice President, who is returning to Washington. We have in the uh, Situation Room all of the officials of the Cabinet who should be here and ready at this time. We have uh, informed our friends abroad of the situation, the President's condition as we know it, stable, now undergoing surgery, and there are Absolutely no alert measures that are necessary at this time or contemplate. Uh, now, if you have some questions, I'd be happy to Crisis take them. Crisis management, that put in, put in the effect when it's pushed to the Crisis management is in effect. Who is making the decisions for the government right now? Who's making the decisions? Constitutionally, gentlemen, you have the president, the vice president, and the secretary of state in that order. And should the president decide he wants to tr transfer the helm to the vice president, he, he will do so. As of now, I am in control here in the White House, pending return of the vice president, and in, in close touch with him. If something came up, I would check with him, of course. What are the extent of the president's injuries? Well, as best we know, uh, he's had one round into his body, in the left side, uh, into the left lung, and there is a surgery underway to remove the round now. When the president entered surgery, he was conscious. Uh, his, all his signs were stable. And uh, yeah, the situation is very clear. How about surgery? Before surgery? 
No, I did not, uh, nor was it necessary. I was in close touch with both uh, Mr. Meese and Mr. Baker throughout and have been from uh, the early moments. Possibly when did you arrive at the White House? After Very the few moments after the incident. Very few moments after the incident. And do you know what is the condition, Mr. Brady? We understand that uh, uh, I just saw on television what you saw, and it sounds serious. What's the reaction of the Soviets in this? I don't anticipate any reaction. I think you've gotten all that you need uh, for the moment, and thank you. Will you remain in charge here until the vice president? We'll stay right where we are until the situation clarifies. When is the vice president expected surgery, sir? When is the vice president expected here? Later this afternoon. He'll be here shortly. The operation began, sir, on the president. About what time? Was I here? Yes, I was here. What time? What time? The operation began. What time was the operation? I don't know. Just it was uh, shortly after that uh, announcement that you heard on the on the radio. Uh, early evening. Well, I, I'm not going to make it a habit of saying where he'll be back. Will you come back and talk to us soon? Thank you. If it's necessary, of course. Any additional measures being taken? Now, that was a videotape of a uh, brief news conference that the Secretary of State held, uh, oh, about an hour ago, I believe, uh, at the uh, White House uh, press room. Uh, many of those questions were, may have seemed to you uh, to be somewhat beside the point, but uh, reporters were trying to pin down just how quickly everybody was alerted and informed of the incident that uh, took place this afternoon so that the processes of managing the government and of uh, being ready for any critical situation or any crisis that might develop as a consequence of this uh, were actually underway. And we know now, of course, that they were. The Secretary of State said that he was there uh, within minutes after, the, uh, after being notified. We understand, too, that the Vice President, who has been in Texas today, uh, is now due to uh, be back in Washington, oh, about 6.30 or so, at Andrews Air Force Base. It's now about uh, quarter to five or so in Washington. We're going to go now uh, to our correspondent, uh, diplomatic correspondent, Barry Dunsmore at the State Department. Barry, uh, any word there on further reaction abroad uh, as it come into the Department of State? Well, Frank, there has been uh, some reaction. Uh, Mrs. Thatcher has expressed her great regret and her prayers, and uh, we understand that any number of countries have been asking precisely what has happened to the president, what is likely to happen next. Now, obviously, from what uh, Secretary of State Haig had to say, uh, they want to underscore the point that uh, the government didn't stop functioning the moment that President Reagan was hit. And uh, I think it's important that uh, that point be stressed. Uh, he said, of course, that absolutely no alert measures had been taken, nor were any contemplated. But any time that the president uh, is threatened, there's always the possibility of a conspiracy, and obviously lots of uh, contingencies have to be considered, which is why he went immediately to the White House, along with the uh, Secretary of Defense, Casper Weinberger. Uh, he did make one uh, interesting observation, which I suspect, uh, in retrospect, there may be some challenges about, in which he said constitutionally, it's the president, uh, the vice president, and then the secretary of state. If he was talking about the succession, that is not true. If he's talking about power within the executive branch, it is true. In any event, uh, as of the moment, he is indeed in charge at the White House, uh, which uh, quite properly he should be. As this building is concerned right now, it's actually very, very quiet with, with many people just standing around television sets waiting for the next word. Frank? And that's exactly what we're doing, waiting for the next word. The last word we had was that the president uh, was in surgery, doctors conducting exploratory surgery, attempting to locate and uh, about remove the bullet that struck him at 2.30 this afternoon, and uh, approximately 2.30 here in uh, Washington, just after he had finished uh, delivering a speech to the uh, Building Trades Council uh, at the Washington Hilton Hotel. And as he came out at, uh, as I say, about 2.30, uh, less than three hours ago, he was struck by a bullet that uh, entered the left side of his chest, and he has been in surgery, so far as we know, for about an hour and ten minutes or so, although we can't really be be certain of that. Uh, we do know that the president uh, walked into the hospital and as the Secretary of State indicated earlier, he was conscious as he was taken into uh, surgery. Uh, we have a photograph here of the, uh, the presidential limousine. There, you see where the circle is. That is the mark made by a bullet that struck the limousine uh, just there at the window level. Uh, the bullet apparently did not penetrate did not go all the way through. Of course, it's bulletproof glass. It may have, it looks as though it struck very close to the, I can't tell really whether it's the, uh, 
Well, it's very near the window anyway, isn't it? Uh, so that would indicate that at least five shots were fired. And just like that, you know, uh, in, a, in a space of uh, just a few seconds. And uh, whether the president was hit by the first one, he probably was. We have a little more information. It's uh, not very much on the man who is in custody, John Warnock Hinckley. One of our reporters has talked to the principal of uh, the high school that he attended in Evergreen, Colorado. He said that uh, Hinckley had uh, behavioral problems, that he was not a model student. But so far as we know, we, he has no criminal record. Uh, the early check run by the FBI uh, was negative in the sense that they ran his card through their files and uh, did not detect, uh, nothing came up. They didn't find that he'd been arrested or charged with anything uh, in his uh, young life. He's only 22 years old. He is a suspect. He was seized immediately uh, after the shooting by a swarm of Secret Service agents and uh, policemen who just swarmed all over him and uh, took him into custody and then took him uh, away. And, uh, but all we know about him is his name, his age, his hometown. His uh, high school principal says that he was not a model student but has had no contact with him or his family for the last several years. And of course, uh, 22 years old, uh, he would have uh, been graduated from high school uh, several years ago. Uh, let's, <clears throat> we're going to re-roll this, uh, this tape now of the actual incident this afternoon at uh, approximately 2.30 Washington time when the president came out of the uh, Hilton Hotel. You see his aides and uh, Secret Service agents. The chief of his detail is on his immediate right as the president comes out. We've slowed this down, slow motion film, waving to the crowd policemen all around him. There was a rope set up to keep the press and uh, the public back as the president made the short walk to his car. Here comes Mike Deaver, deputy chief of staff, and now it happens. <clears throat> that was the, that was the moment. And then, of course, they swarmed all over the, uh, the suspected assailant. John Warnock Hinckley. Uh, all right. I now have on the line here, I understand, uh, one of our uh, correspondent from our affiliate of uh, station KBTV in Denver, Rick Salinger of that station, is uh, across the street from the Hinckley home in Evergreen, Colorado. He is ready to talk now. Uh, Rick, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Frank. Yes, tell me, what do you know about this young man? Well, I'm afraid there still isn't a great deal known about uh, Mr. Hinckley. We are at his home, which is in Evergreen, Colorado, up in the mountains, about 22 miles from Denver, a very luxurious neighborhood. Apparently, he grew up here, and then the family moved to Dallas, and uh, Hinckley attended high school in Dallas, graduating in 1973. We understand he was not the best of students, but then again, not the worst either. He has no criminal record around here, so far as we can tell from checking with local police, and as far as the FBI is concerned, they can find no criminal record either. Mr. Hinckley, the father, has just returned home along with his brother, Scott, we are told. They have issued no statement at the present time, and we don't know if they plan to. Apparently, Mr. Hinckley is involved, Hinckley, rather, is involved in the energy and oil business in Denver. He may be an owner, he may be an upper management in a company. We're just not sure of that yet. Young uh, Hinckley has a brother or sister, uh other members of the family do you know uh, rick as far as we understand there are three children in the family he is one of them he is the youngest i see and he's 22 uh, years old we understand too by the way that the secret service is right now uh, in the uh, hinkley home in evergreen colorado and uh, talking there with members of the uh, Hinckley family. Did you see anybody? I suppose there's quite a bit of activity there. Is that true, uh, Rick? As a matter of fact, there is. The place is swarming with reporters and also passerbys who are just uh, curious and want to get a look at the home and see what they can find out as well. What kind of a home is it? <clears throat> well, it's a very nice home. It's a three-story home with uh, built-in uh, wood and nestled uh, up on the side of a mountain here overlooking the valley. And uh, it's in the Haiwan area of Evergreen. We are told the family belongs to the Haiwan Country Club, which is uh, not far from here at all. So, uh, seems to be just uh, an ordinary middle-class family. Uh, perhaps uh, even uh, a little better off than middle-class, huh? They belong to the club. 
you don't know anything about this young fellow, you haven't been able to learn very Apparently much except he that he was spend a great deal of time around here. One neighbor told me that uh, she thought he was out in California at the present time. Just where in California or what he was supposed to be doing there, she didn't know, and uh, we don't know either. Uh, this information is slow in uh, coming to the service, but we hope to learn more in just a little while. Apparently the family has some ties to Guatemala. Just uh, what kind of ties, we don't know, but they were supposed to be leaving for there fairly soon, apparently to help in some water project. I see. Well, undoubtedly more information will become available as time goes on. Thank you very much. That was uh, Rick Salinger of our affiliate uh, in Denver, KBTV, who was reporting from Evergreen, Colorado, just across the street from the home of this young man who is uh, in custody in Washington now and is the suspect in this shooting. We have, uh, his name is John Warnock Hinckley. He is 22 years old, and really that's about all that is known about him, except that he is from Evergreen, Colorado. Just before we go back to another eyewitness, I want to tell you once more, the last word we had, the president was in surgery. Now, we don't know whether he is still in surgery, but uh, he's, if so, he's been in there for more than an hour, an hour and 10 or 15 minutes or so. Exploratory surgery to find and locate and remove the bullet that struck him at 2.30 this afternoon. We understand the bullet entered the left side of the president. It did not hit his heart. Uh, we had a report that one lung has partially collapsed. The president uh, was conscious. He got out of the car and walked into the hospital. He uh, was conscious, according to the Secretary of State, as he was taken into surgery and uh, was talking to people. Mrs. Reagan is at the uh, hospital and has been since uh, very shortly after the incident occurred. That's the George Washington University Hospital. It's a very short distance, really, from the White House, and it is the closest hospital uh, to the scene of the, uh, of the actual shooting, which is uh, the Washington Hilton Hotel. We also understand that Ronald Reagan Jr., the uh, president's son, is on his way back to Washington now. He was on tour with the Joffrey Ballet Company, uh, was in Lincoln, Nebraska, when he was told of the, the attack on his father, and he, too, is uh, on his way back to Washington now. Now we have another uh, videotape uh, of uh, an eyewitness uh, to the shooting, so we'll, uh, we'll go back to that now. They came right beside me. Just well, about. shots are very difficult. Did you see they the were, they were, they were, there was a, he had a 38. Well, Tom and Brady and everybody was going down. The camera guys were standing in line, and Tucker and I were standing right behind you. Right, the eight, well, Brady was going down, the agent was going down, everybody was going down, and as I was going down, it was a clear shot. The helmet with the gun and the aides, Where everybody grabbed him. He was to my right. In the line with the camera? In the line He'd with the cameras. Right the he moved right up to the road to start firing. It's a white male with blind hair, about, uh, I guess, about 5'11. You say a 38. Do you know guns? I mean, how do you. I used to be able to. It's a handgun. It's a right? handgun, yes. Excuse me. Who got him? Two agents got him and Anyone a police officer. Him? I'm not sure. There was guns being pulled out all over the place at that point. But I heard about maybe four to five shots and all came Your from. Your camera stayed on people going down and Reagan getting the limousine. Yes. And on the, uh, and them wrestling the uh, gunmen. And you got him wrestling the gunmen. Yes. Did you see anybody shoot we can get oh, We can get the car. Okay. The green rail. The all up? No. Um, I was busy with the action that was right in front of me. Good. Prosperi, what did you see? Where were you? I was standing on the driveway and I was walking outside, Sam, and all of a sudden I heard four shots. I turned around and I just saw a lot of bodies moving in different groups. I saw Jim on the ground. Jim Brady. Jim Brady. And then I saw another group against the wall. And at that point, the limousine had already moved. You can. Well, I was watching Reagan the whole time. And from what I saw, it was a combination of shock, seeing his potential land right in front of his eyes. You could see the feeling in his eyes so immensely. It's a feeling that will be forever printed on my memory. What did you see happen? I didn't see the gunman. I heard the shots. I, I counted about five. I didn't count them then, obviously. I just seem to remember about that many. And Did you see Reagan hit? Did Reagan hit? I saw Reagan in a state of shock, fear, Hold up, and... Hold up. Hold up. Those were uh, eyewitness accounts videotaped earlier, including our own uh, cameraman, Hank Brown, who was on the scene and uh, actually uh, taped uh, the entire incident. Uh, we have a statement that has been issued on behalf of uh, former President Carter. It comes from Atlanta, and I'll read it to you. Uh, the full statement says, President Carter is anxiously awaiting further word on President Reagan's condition and that of the others wounded. He and Mrs. Carter join the entire nation in prayer for the well-being of all those wounded and for their families. That statement was just issued on behalf of former President Carter uh, in Georgia. 
One other uh, item today, tremendous, uh, important, newsworthy day that we uh, really ought to bring you up uh, to date on, the plane that was hijacked uh, to Bangkok, Thailand. More than 100 uh, commandos stormed the hijacked Indonesian uh, jetliner. There were 50 hostages aboard and they recaptured it from gunmen, but police uh, broadcast said there were many injuries. The broadca broadcast said the commandos stormed the jet a few minutes later, the plane was declared recaptured, but there is a quote uh, from the uh, broadcast in Bangkok. It says there are many bodies, there are many wounded, the passengers are running in panic, and then they shouted that the plane has been recaptured. That's to bring you up to date on that plane that, that, that was hijacked uh, and was eventually taken to uh, Bangkok in Thailand. Apparently the plane, uh, which was taken by five terrorists, has been recaptured, but there must have been some injuries involved in uh, getting it back into custody and getting it away from the uh, hijackers. Well, the story, of course, it's now 5 o'clock here in the east coast of the United States. We're waiting to uh, learn the condition of the President of the United States, who has been in surgery for some time, according to our information. I must point out it's entirely possible that he is out of uh, surgery now. We just don't know that. We have our correspondents, naturally, at the George Washington University Hospital, where the President has been. Uh, he was taken there directly from the Washington Hilton Hotel, where he was shot this afternoon. And uh, according to our information, he went into surgery shortly after 3.30, which would make it about an hour and a half ago. We don't know whether the president is still in surgery. Uh, he may well be out, but we've had no official word. And most of our information really is coming from the, uh, the hospital itself, and they have not had much to say uh, for quite some time now. The uh, vice president, who uh, is on his way back now to uh, Washington from Texas, he will go, of course, directly from uh, Andrews Air Force Base uh, to the White House and he'll go to the Situation Room for a briefing by uh, senior officials, uh, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Cap Weinberger, the Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Donald Regan, and uh, Attorney General uh, William French Smith, the CIA Director, uh, Bill Casey, they're all there, and uh, they have been uh, in a crisis management uh, situation ever since uh, the word came shortly after 2.30 this afternoon that the President of the United States, wait a minute, what is this from Sam Donaldson? The President is okay? And, but Jim Brady is not doing well. I have a report, which I'm passing on to you, it's just been handed to me here, that the president is okay, and Jim Brady is not doing well. That comes from Sam Donaldson, who was at the hospital. Can we go back to Sam at the hospital? Sam? Sam? Here at George Washington yes. University Hospital, uh, we are told unofficially that President Reagan is still in surgery. He was taken into surgery uh, sometime after 3.30. Uh, presumably uh, to uh, remove the bullet that uh, had lodged in his body. He was shot, as you know, according to an official report here, on the left side of his chest, and uh, to uh, repair whatever damage the bullet did. I am told by two sources, one of them uh, a high official of the uh, government of the city of Washington, that the president is said to be doing well. Uh, that uh, the talk is that he is doing well, but the surgery at last report was uh, still uh, going on and uh, was still uh, underway. Uh, James Brady, the press secretary, uh, was also brought here to George Washington University Hospital. We have no official report on him, uh, but uh, I am told that he is not doing well. Uh, so to recapitulate, uh, President Reagan in surgery here at the hospital, uh, George Washington University Hospital, is said to be doing well unofficially. We have had no official announcement. We haven't even had any official announcement from here at least that uh, surgery was underway. Uh, James Brady, the press secretary who was shot uh, uh, in the head, uh, is said not to be doing well. That's it, Frank. All right. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very much. We are going to remain on the air. I just want to pass the word along to all of our stations and to uh, everybody else. That we're going to stay on the air until we uh, learn further on the condition of the president, until we find out that the president uh, is okay. And the last word we've had is from Sam there at the George Washington University Hospital who said he has been told that the president uh, is doing well. We have a man in custody. He is a 22-year-old white male named John Warner Hinckley, said to be of Evergreen, Colorado. Well, we know he's from Evergreen, Colorado. We don't know very much more about him. He has no uh, prior criminal record, apparently. Let's go now back up to Capitol Hill and to uh, our correspondent, Britt Hume. Britt? Frank, things here are quite subdued. I'm on the Senate side of the Capitol at the moment. Uh, Senator Baker has uh, recessed the Senate until uh, further notice. And he and uh, most of the other members of the Senate are crowded around television sets here on Capitol Hill, awaiting further word on the condition of the president 
and the others who were injured. We do understand that Senator Laxalt, who as you know, Frank, is a very close and personal friend of the President's, uh, was picked up uh, apparently by, White House, uh, by a White House car soon after the shooting and was taken to the hospital where he has joined uh, the Reagan family uh, in uh, waiting the, uh, the outcome of the President's surgery. Uh, one other note I think worth mentioning is that uh, we understand that Speaker Tip O'Neill is in his office at this moment. Uh, he has not issued a statement. However, uh, I think it worth noting that my understanding is that uh, Secretary of State Haig, who indicated earlier that the line of succession goes President, Vice President, Secretary of State, is probably wrong. I think the Constitution uh, would put the Speaker of the House ahead of the Secretary of State. Uh, as for any specific reaction as to what uh, kind of proposals or legislative action might grow out of this uh, tragic episode, uh, Senator Lawton Childs of Florida, Democrat of Florida, was just in here a short time ago, Frank, and uh, we asked him about some of those things, and he said that nobody here is prepared to discuss that, uh, that all anybody here is waiting uh, for is uh, news from the hospital. Frank? Thank you, Britt, and that, of course, is what we are waiting for. The uh, Secret Service... A spokesman, Jack uh, Warner, said that uh, Hinckley, the man who is under arrest for uh, this attempted assassination of the president today, uh, John Warnock Hinckley, 22 years old, the spokesman said he appeared to have acted alone. Uh, that's all we have on it. Uh, he appeared to have acted alone. Uh, naturally, at a time of this uh, kind, uh, the, there is, or at least there, there can be, uh, some fears raised about a uh, possible conspiracy. Uh, no doubt there will be every time something like this happens, as it happens so frequently in our country. There are conspiracy theorists. I'm just... Kennedy? Senator Kennedy has now been given a Secret Service agent to guard him in light of what happened here this afternoon. The uh, senator, of course, did uh, have uh, Secret Service protection all uh, during the campaign. It was given to him, uh, as a matter of fact, even before he officially announced his candidacy, as I recall, by former President Carter when it appeared that he might become a candidate. And then the number of threats against him uh, increased and so forth. And so he had Secret Service protection. Now the Secret Service, just simply as a precautionary measure, are uh, putting guards around people in Washington who are in positions of authority and who might well be considered... Uh, targets, if uh, you want to use that word, although we do have this report from the Secret Service spokesman that the man who was in custody appears to have acted alone. So whether that's definitive or not, we really cannot say. Susan King is at the White House in the press room right now, so we'll go back there. Any late words, Susan? Well, Frank, uh, since the Secretary of State Haig came out and briefed us officially, there's been no official word. I must say it is very calm and collected here at the White House. Uh, most of the people who I have been seeing are very close friends of the President, been with him for many years since California days, and there's an awful somber feeling here. I put together a few of the sort of uh, disparate facts that have been going on. One person told me that he received a call from Ron Jr., who said he heard on the radio, heard that there was a shooting, and wanted to know how his father was. I mean, the situation for all people, those closest to the president and everyone else, are finding out the same way. And in fact, as you reported earlier, Ron Jr. will be coming here to Washington. Maureen, uh, the daughter, is already in Washington. She was here and did a few interviews. Exactly what her position is, where she is, we have not been able to uh, ascertain. I was also talking to some people in Vice President Bush's office. And I understand, to give an idea of, of how this all comes about, the Vice President was on a plane and received a first call from his press secretary, Pete Teeley, who said there has been a shooting, but the President is okay. That was the word that he had gotten officially. There were no reports, of, as you, of course, know, that the President was shot initially. Uh, the Vice President was at least uh, relieved a bit, landed in Austin, where he was supposed to give a speech, and immediately turned around to come back here to Washington. By the third conversation, with the press secretary, the president had been informed by other sources that the president had in fact been shot. Of course, there are top communications on that plane, and the vice president is en route back here to Washington at this time. I understand that he will be coming here in the official capacity as crisis manager. Uh, that is a term that we all probably know a lot more about in the last week because of the flap that developed about that. The vice president will be uh, overseeing the situation room. But there's been a question that came up to Secretary of State Haig when he appeared here in the press room. Who will be in charge and who will determine who's in charge? I am told that Frank Fielding, who is the uh, counsel to the president, will be the one who will have to ascertain whether someone else would have to become the acting president. The vice president, when he arrives here in Washington, 
early evening, will only be acting as the crisis manager, at least at that time. His chief of staff, and Admiral Murphy, is in the Situation Room with the Cabinet Secretary of State Haig and top officials here at the White House. All medical reports were probably getting uh, second uh, in line because they are coming from the hospital where a situation room has been set up there. As you probably know, the top staff, uh, Mr. Meese, Ed Meese, Jim Baker, the two top staff along with uh, Mike Deaver, longtime associate of the president, are at the uh, hospital. Frank? Thank you, Susan. I'm just reminded, uh, well, first of all, let me tell you again, the latest word we had came from Sam Donaldson, who was at the hospital just before we heard from Susan King, who said he had been told uh, that the president is doing well, but uh, we understood that he is, at that time, was uh, still in surgery. Now, we, uh, we know that he, or we believe that he was taken into surgery uh, sometime after 3.30 this afternoon. It is now 10 after 5 o'clock here uh, on the East Coast. And uh, whether the president is still in surgery or not, we don't know, but Sam had a report that he seems to be doing well. We also had a report that uh, Jim Brady, the press secretary, is in very critical condition. I was reminded, uh, I don't know why, uh, I guess there was mention made some time ago about how difficult it was, it is to protect a president. Uh, I remember uh, the two uh, assaults on, uh, on, former, on President Ford on September 5th, 1975 in Sacramento by uh, Squeaky Fromm. On that day, as it happened, uh, I remember, uh, I happened to be with then uh, ex or former Governor Reagan, of California, who was giving a speech in Las Vegas. And we went from Las Vegas to uh, a little town in Illinois where he uh, gave his first speech uh, denouncing the Panama Canal treaties. I think there were, uh, that was in early, or in 75. He had not yet announced his candidacy. I think there was only one other reporter traveling with him. It was Dick Burkholz of the uh, Los Angeles Times and I. And I remember sitting in the uh, VIP room there in the Las Vegas airport that day with a group of uh, Las Vegas policemen who had uh, uh, come in there with the governor, uh, the then governor, and the subject of the attempt on uh, Mr. Ford came up. And I remember how vigorous uh, Mr. Reagan was then in asserting that uh, police and Secret Service cannot be blamed because there's just no way that you can protect a president against an attempt like that if the person is uh, determined enough to carry it out. And then we flew on to Illinois, and that night, just before we went to uh, some high school where he was going to uh, give his speech, why well, we got word of the second attempt on uh, President Ford. Uh, that was September 22nd, uh, that day in San Francisco, when Sarah Jane Moore fired at Mr. Ford as he came out of, uh, I believe it was the St. Francis Hotel in San Francisco. And now here we are waiting for word on Ronald Reagan and the condition of him. We're uh, also waiting for word on Jim Brady. We are being told that Jim Brady has passed away. I'm reporting that, gentlemen, now. I trust your information is accurate. And we're being told by our people at the hospital that Jim Brady, the 40-year-old press secretary, here, I'm going to answer this phone right now, has passed away. The White House... The White House is now confirming that Jim Brady, 40 years old, the White House press secretary, is dead. The White House confirms this. This is Bill Greenwood, who said he has been told by officials at the White House, and we had just heard the same word from the hospital, that Jim Brady, 40 years old, White House press secretary, is dead. He was struck in the head. Here's a picture of him. I guess, uh, the city ought to go in the morning now. He's, he was a, a very likable, affable uh, fellow, as I said earlier. He thoroughly enjoyed the uh, give and take every day with the correspondents in the briefing room. He was very close to uh, the president, uh, physically, as they came out of the Washington Hilton Hotel this afternoon. And uh, he was struck. It appeared to us that he suffered a head wound, and I guess that has been confirmed. And now the hospital and the White House confirms that James Brady, 40 years old, married, one son, has uh, become a fatality and is dead as a consequence of this shooting today. Two other people, in addition to the president, also were wounded in this incident that occurred a little less than three hours ago now. 
Uh, Brady's, Mr. Brady's condition always was described to us as critical, very critical, very serious, and apparently attempts to, uh, to save him were not successful. And so a murder has been committed now, and a death has occurred. The last word on the president from our source, uh, according to one source, uh, is that at 5.10, which is five minutes ago, that the president is still in surgery. The doctors reportedly did exploratory surgery, uh, first to determine whether there was any abdominal injury. There was not. Uh, but we are told that the bullet in the president's chest has not yet been removed. We're going to go back to the hospital now and Roger Peterson. Roger? Is it Peterson? Yes. Go ahead, Roger. He can't hear me, so he's waiting to be cued. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Lynn Otziger has just briefed the press here at Georgetown University Hospital. He said President Reagan went into surgery about an hour ago. He could be there for a little while longer or a great deal longer. They're not sure at this point. And Otziger said he wasn't sure where the president was hit. He didn't think that his heart had been nicked. Uh, he said that as the president was wheeled down the hall into the operating room, uh, he had uh, some comments there. If I can find my notes in this mess. He, uh, he saw Meese and Baker and a few other White House aides standing around, and he said, who's minding the store? Uh, to his wife, he said, honey, I forgot to duck. And uh, when he was in the operating room, he told the doctors, I hope you're all Republicans. That's all we have at this point. No word on the condition of James Brady, the White House press secretary. We have had reports it looks very bad. All right, thank you, Roger. Yes, we have had reports. Uh, Roger Peterson is outside the George Washington University Hospital and uh, is not privy to all the information that is coming into us here. We've had reports that uh, Jim Brady is in fact dead. We're going to go back now to uh, Bill Greenwood at the White House. Bill? Frank, we have confirmation from David Prospery of the White House press office that Brady has died. Uh, the official confirmation uh, occurred, was given to me about five minutes ago. Uh, there was a a real gasp here in the press room of the White House as that word began to circulate because although he had served here only a short time, Brady was a very popular press secretary, a, a big jovial man. Uh, the, he was known as the bear because uh, of his size, a man of great humor. And uh, there's very little we can say except that the people here were just shocked. And it has, as we say, been confirmed. The president's press secretary is dead. Frank. Bill, uh, you say he was a man of great humor. I was struck by the fact that as you were talking there behind you was the uh, rostrum where uh, Jim Brady uh, presided over the uh, daily briefings and answered and fended off questions from reporters during his uh, so short tenure as White House press secretary. And now the unspeakable, the unthinkable has occurred and he is struck down by an assassin firing at the president. We understand, i give you this latest bit of information, the Secret Service agent Tim McCarthy uh, who was wounded, uh, has left the operating room and is described, according to our correspondent Barry Serafin, as doing fine. So that's encouraging. We are. And also we're told that the president uh, is still in surgery. Uh, we understand he is said to be doing all right. Uh, Roger reported that Lynn Nofziger said the president went into surgery about an hour ago. We had earlier heard that he'd gone in as early as, uh, or shortly after 3.30 this afternoon. Jim Brady, Say that again, please. Uh, oh, yes. Vice President Bush is on his way back to Washington. He's in Texas today, was there uh, for a speech uh, to the Cattle Growers Association. He delivered that speech and then was supposed to address the uh, Texas State Legislature in uh, Austin, state capital, uh, but uh, did not, of course, and uh, came on back to Washington. He's due to land here in, uh, oh, perhaps uh, about an hour and a half or so. Well, about an hour, I guess and uh, we'll come into uh, Andrews Air Force Base and then immediately go uh, to the White House. Let me just take a moment here to talk about Jim Brady. I, I mentioned earlier the gridiron dinner last Saturday night, which is a gathering of all the Washington uh, officials, uh, past and present, uh, and uh, Jim Brady, of course, was there. He was introduced as the White House press secretary. And the gridiron dinner is uh, an annual roasting affair where people poke good-natured fun at the officials in power. And uh, the reporter who, uh, it's the sort of an event where reporters make up these goofy, crazy songs and they sing them about various officials. And the song that was sung about Brady was, She's Grown Accustomed to My Face. And that, of course, was a reference to the fact that there was some talk some time ago before he was appointed 
to the job of press secretary that he was his appointment was delayed because Mrs. Reagan did not like his looks, which of course was utter nonsense. And but that was the song, and I remember looking at Jim as the uh, as the song was being sung, and of course he was hugely enjoying it. And there's a picture of him now. He's only 40 years old. Wait a minute, I'm I'm being told now that there are conflicting reports. Oh my goodness, I, I must apologize. Uh, I, I hope that what I've been reporting is, is all wrong, uh, but I am now told, uh, people talking in my ear here, that there are conflicting reports that, uh, that Jim may well be alive yet. Let's, I, I hope it's true, obviously we all hope it's true, but we did have reports from the hospital earlier and from the White House that, uh, that he had passed away. We know that he was in very critical condition. Let's get it nailed down, somebody. Let's <clears throat> find out. Let's get the word here and let's get it straight uh, so that we can, we can report this uh, accurately. Uh, I certainly hope that everything I've been saying is, is wrong, but it's been that kind of an afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure that you will understand and bear with us for quite a long time after the incident occurred at 2.30 Washington time. Uh, we believed that uh, the president had not been hit, and then it was subsequently disclosed that he had, in fact, been wounded. We're going to go back now to Bill Greenwood at the White House. Do you have more information, Bill? Frank, I wish I could con clear up the confusion. We understand that Deputy White House News Secretary Larry Speaks is on his way into the press room to try and clarify the situation. As we reported a few minutes ago, David Prospery, a member of the White House press staff, said that Brady had died. But now, uh, as you know from the hospital, Lynn Nofsinger apparently says that is not true. We are hoping that when Mr. Speaks gets here to the press room, we will be able to uh, find out why this, uh, this confusion exists. Uh, Speaks has been in the White House Situation Room, which is serving as the clearinghouse for the official information, and uh, presumably would have definite word. Uh, but as I say, the report that, uh, that was issued earlier did come from a member of Brady's staff, and we can only uh, report what he had to say to us. So, as, as I said a moment ago, we're now waiting for Larry Speaks to come here to the press room from the Situation Room, which is uh, a floor below us here in the White House, and tell us uh, just what is happening. Frank? I, thank you, Bill. Uh, again, I must apologize uh, for, uh, for the tenuous uh, nature of uh, the information that is uh, coming to us, but we did have word from a White House official about uh, James Brady, and uh, then we've had another conflicting report, so we'll just hold it in abeyance and pray that, uh, that he is still alive and uh, hope that we, uh, we can get it straight. Ted Koppel has now joined me. Uh, Ted, uh, I guess everybody is going to be uh, remembering exactly where they were at about 2.30 this afternoon when, when the word came. Do you have any further information? I know you've been back here talking to our no, people in, around the phone. In, uh, in fact, I think one of the reasons that they want me to be sitting here is so that you're not put in the awkward position of people talking into your ear at one point, and uh, this way, while one of us is talking, the other one of us can be getting a little bit of information. In fact, the, the only additional information, and I should emphasize, as Frank has been doing all afternoon, that we, we really do not have certain information on the condition of any of the men involved, uh, but since there has been such confusion over uh, Jim Brady's condition and indeed uh, apparently premature reports of his death, uh, we have a report from one of the nurses on the floor that Mr. Brady was still in surgery. Now that may be wrong too and we're in this terribly awkward position of, yes. of trying to give you information on the one hand as quickly as we get it but on the other hand as accurately as possible. Well. Here is a wire service report, Ted, that uh, simply says it's a bulletin. All three networks reported Monday that White House Press Secretary James Brady died from bullet wounds suffered in an attempt on President Reagan's life. White House aide Lynn Nofziger, and quote, emphatically denied the report. So again, we must apologize if we are uh, passing along information that is not confirmed, but naturally there is, there is great concern. Uh, we're certainly not trying to, uh, <laughs> to be first with the news. Uh, this is not one of those situations where there is any, any real uh, urge to try to beat anybody to anything. We, we want to get it straight. And it was uh, the White House, uh, a White House official, who told us about uh, Mr. Brady, and so we naturally, we reported it. As a matter of fact, earlier, I, uh, when I first got the word, Ted, about the name of the young man who's been taken into custody, uh, 
all I had was a name, and I, I didn't want to just blurt it out until finally the Secret Service did confirm. Well, you know, the White House, too. Uh, you remember Larry Speaks came out before and, and said he was going to come out every 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, and as a matter of fact, he's going to be coming out uh, even as we speak. So let's switch over to the White House now and uh, acting White House Press Secretary Larry Speaks. Let me say, to start with, that I will not be able to answer any questions I'm essentially confirming what's been said from the hospital. The president is still in surgery and will be for a while, but the doctors in a preliminary report to Mrs. Reagan have just assured her that his condition remains good. As far as the report about Jim Brady, it is untrue and he is in serious condition. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> that is uh, Larry Speaks, who said that uh, the report on Jim Brady is untrue, that he remains, he is uh, in serious condition. He reported that the uh, information actually that had been given out by the White House, and which we subsequently relayed to you, was incorrect. So they're all obviously upset, and, uh, distraught, I suppose, to in some degree. And uh, somehow or other, the incorrect information was given to the White House, the White House passed it along to us, and we naturally, uh, reluctantly, had to report it. But we are now happy, if that is the right word, to tell you that the report is untrue, that Jim Brady is said to be, uh, his condition is uh, very serious, but uh, he is still alive. The president, still in surgery, has been for some time. The doctors, what was the term he used, uh, Ted, have assured Mrs. Reagan. Very good his condition. condition. Very good, did he very, say? I, I, no? I didn't take the note down because I was listening to you, as a matter of fact, but I, I think that the, uh, the president's condition is, is very good. Uh, and that Mrs. Reagan had been assured of that. But the, uh, the point we're, we're both making is that uh, everyone, the White House and, of course, all the media covering this as it's happening, is trying to walk this tightrope between giving you information as quickly as we possibly can and at the same time trying to ascertain that that information is as accurate as it could possibly be. Susan King is standing by now in the briefing room at the White House. Susan? We're not uh, hearing Susan. Uh, can we make another attempt now to uh, get her microphone in working order? Uh, or is there just a, well, a small technical problem? Susan, can you hear us now? Yes, I can, Frank, if All you right, can hear me. All right, go ahead. Yeah, start over if you would, please. Surely. As, as you might imagine, uh, the mood here is very somber, and people, all those who we are getting our information from, are not only the subordinates of, but good friends of Jim Brady, which is why there probably is a real hesitation here, and people are holding their breath moment by moment. There's no doubt about it that Jim Brady is in very serious condition. As most of us know at this point, he was hit in the temple by a gunshot wound, and that is very serious. His wife was called by the White House immediately after and went to the hospital. He is in very serious condition, and so it's a moment-by-moment moment watch, and people here are just extremely upset, acting mighty professional, I must admit. He also has an 18-year-old daughter uh, who is in college and uh, who learned through the radio and television reports and was called later. He has a young son, five years old also, who, of course, is home with his wife now. Uh, the situation here remains pretty much the same. Uh, the people who are in the know are in the Situation Room. You've probably heard us talking about that a number of times. That is a special area in the White House in the basement, which is equipped with the most modern communication ultimate connection to all people uh, internationally and nationally and where the situation of any crisis is monitored. Right now the uh, top cabinet officials are there as well as those who are advisors to Vice President Bush who of course is on his way back and uh, Larry Speaks who is the assistant press secretary who will be briefing us here trying to keep us up moment to moment. If you have just uh, tuned in, you have learned from Mr. Speaks, in fact, who said that the president is still in surgery, but doctors have told Mrs. Reagan that the situation is good. The children are all expected to uh, come to Washington, if they're not all here, during the evening. White House uh, communications and travel uh, personnel are making arrangements for them to come here. And Mr. Speaks said, at this point, it is untrue that Jim Brady has died. He just said he is in serious condition, but the reports of his death are untrue. Just one perhaps a more light moment, Lynn Nofziger, who was the press secretary during the campaign for the president, and who's been with him for many, many years, um, brought in perhaps some of the humor that the president uh, 
looks at. Uh, he said that as the president saw uh, Paul Laxalt, the senator who advised him for many years, he said, uh, don't worry about me, I'll make it. The president, known for his one-liners, also told uh, Deaver and Meese as he was being rolled past them, hey, who's minding the store? And he said to doctors as he's wheeled into surgery, I hope you're all Republicans. That's one thing about the president. He does have a uh, sense of humor at every moment, no matter how critical, politically or personally. Frank? Thank you very much, Susan. Yes, he's supposed to have said to uh, Mrs. Reagan, <clears throat> honey, I forgot to duck. His supply <laughs> of one-liners is uh, apparently inexhaustible. Unlimited. Uh, there, uh, <clears throat> go ahead, Ted. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, and, and again, I, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to attribute this uh, because it's Mutual Radio that's saying it, but they quote an unnamed hospital doctor uh, saying that the bullet missed the president's heart by an inch. Of course, the key word there is missed. Uh, but struck him in the left chest, and I guess the reports that the lung has collapsed? It's not been confirmed, Ted. We had a report that uh, one lung had partially collapsed. That was quite early in the afternoon, uh, very shortly after the incident. A doctor at uh, George Washington University uh, Hospital told us that. Uh, we realize now that there are millions of people just coming home and uh, perhaps learning of uh, this incident uh, for the first time who have not seen the tape that uh, we have run uh, many times this afternoon ever since 2.30, but we want to show it to you again. Is it going to be in slow motion? Uh, the president came out of the Washington Hilton Hotel at 2.30, approximately 2.30 this afternoon, after delivering a speech to the uh, Building Trades Council of the AFL-CIO. You'll see him emerge in a moment with the chief of the Secret Service detail right alongside him, waving to the crowd. We've slowed this tape down. And we'll see Michael Deaver come right into full camera view in just a moment and turn right toward the camera. Here he comes now. The president puts his arm down, raises his left arm. This agent, Frank, you see the agent who's turning to face us, he gets hit. He's one of the agents. That's uh, right, he's hit. Yes, yes, down he goes. That's Tim McCarthy. At least that was the identification that I was given earlier. That's correct. So he, in fact, was right by the president's side uh, when the attack took place. And in the line of fire. And in the line of fire. Timothy J. Timothy McCarthy. Timothy J. McCarthy, yes. And it's McCarthy whom you see lying prone on the sidewalk there. And although all of this is taking place in slow motion, the extraordinary thing about it, and, and having seen it as you have, Frank, several times now, is the, is the extreme speed with which the Secret Service oh, sure. acted. I mean, uh, you've said it before, and I suppose it bears repeating, that uh, when someone is prepared to put their own life on the line to attack the president, there is literally nothing short of locking the president up in a vault in the basement of the White House that can be done to, to completely defend him. Uh, but they were doing exactly what they are supposed to do. They were right next to the president. Indeed, one of the Secret Service agents took a bullet that presumably was meant for the president. Yes, he, he was <clears throat> in the line of fire and between the president and the gun. What you see here now are the suspect. Now, here's a picture of Hinckley. He is the, uh, the alleged assailant. That's a driver's license picture, I'm told. I, earlier, I told, was given to understand that he did not have a driver's license. But uh, anyway, that's the first look we've had at John Warnock Hinckley, 22 years old, of Evergreen, Colorado. He is under arrest and is in custody. And it is believed, uh, at least by the police, they took him into custody right after the shooting. Uh, he is the man who fired the shots that wounded the president, wounded James Brady who was in critical condition, wounded a Secret Service agent, and wounded a District of Columbia policeman, uh, a named Delahanty. Uh, you know, these, these reports, Frank, well, it's, it's not really any further information uh, except that it's part of the, uh, part of the continuing litany of, of reactions that's going to be coming in uh, throughout the rest of the evening. This one from Tip O'Neill, the uh, House Majority Leader. I am shocked that this has happened, and I join all Americans in praying for the President and others who were injured. That again from Tip O'Neill. Uh, I mentioned a moment ago the uh, policeman, uh, the District of Columbia policeman, Thomas K. Delahanty. He is 45 years old. He is in uh, serious condition now with uh, wounds, according to this wire service report, in the shoulder and neck. He had first been listed in critical condition, but now he is said to be in serious condition. 
and the Secret Service agent, uh, Tim McCarthy, we understand, is doing better. Jim Brady is in critical condition, and we're waiting word on the President of the United States, who at last report from the White House was still in surgery at George Washington Hospital. We are going to stay on the air right here until we are satisfied that the President's uh, condition can be confirmed and until we get a report uh, from the hospital and uh, we get this story finally uh, wrapped up. So uh, we just want to uh, alert all our stations along the way that the events are, <coughs> excuse me, fast breaking. We uh, almost instantaneously get uh, late word from either the George Washington University Hospital or from the White House press room and we're naturally going to stay right on the air uh, in order to bring you whatever information comes into us. All right, the, uh, the latest information now comes from Kay Warner, who is acting as a spokesman for the Brady family. That's Jim Brady, the uh, White House spokesman. And uh, she says that Brady would undergo surgery, which is expected to take between, between three to five hours. Now, of course, we're under the impression that the surgery is already underway, and I, I have a feeling that it must be. But uh, very serious surgery. Those earlier reports, and again, some of you may have been coming back and forth, those earlier reports that Jim Brady had passed away, fortunately not true, but he is in very grave condition and apparently undergoing surgery that will be quite prolonged. The president? Uh, is still undergoing surgery, is that right? As of well, the last as word that we got? Well, Ted, which is what? A little more than 10 minutes ago, Larry Speaks came out in the White House press room and said the president is still in surgery. And uh, he said then that the doctors have assured Mrs. Reagan that the president's condition is good. We understand uh, that uh, there was first exploratory surgery uh, carried out to determine whether there had been any abdominal injury and uh, it was determined that none uh, had occurred and then the chest surgery was uh, undertaken in order to uh, locate and remove the bullet. We, uh, hold on just a moment. All right, we're, we're, we have a tape now of a reporter who was given some information at the hospital, it was on the third floor apparently when people were brought in. Let's, let's roll the tape. With two secret See. service agents. We went upstairs, I got all the way upstairs, where Brady was being taken care of. What time? This was uh, about 2.30, 3 about 3 o'clock when I was up there. The doctors took Mrs. Brady aside and a couple of White House aides and briefed her on Brady's condition. I used the telephone and got thrown out by an agent and was moved around the hall. And I happened to walk to a room and looked in, and there was Jim Brady on a table being worked on. It was in the, what they call the head scan room. This is where they do the CAT scans of the brain. This is the computerized picture of the brain which shows the damage done to Mr. Brady's forehead and the brain area. I found an intern up there who had just responded and who got in his area, the radiology area, to see that brain scan and to see the CAT pictures. He said the bullet entered Mr. Brady's brain just above the right eye did extensive damage to the brain. The prognosis is not good. The head, the head of, beg pardon? He said, he says, as a doctor, he said, it is not good. He said, I have nothing official, but he said, few, sur few people survive such a wound. And he would go no further than that. He'd rather not have his name used because he's on the staff. He was able to float freely and get my questions answered and get back in. He did not want to be identified except to say that the senior medical officer in charge of both Brady's situation and the president's situation was a friend of his, so he could move in and out of those areas. What did he tell you about the president? He said the president had been shot just to the left side of the lung, of the left lung. The bullet missed the heart by about one inch. It caused some damage in that area to some of the arteries and some of the, the, the blood vessels. Caused that area to fill with blood. So when the president came in, they immediately inserted chest tubes and began to, uh, began to extract through suction that blood and mucus that, that accumulated. He said that the president at four o'clock Eastern Time was wheeled into the surgical area. 
and the surgery began. It's a procedure they call thoracotomy, which is nothing more than open chest surgery. I asked him how long it will take. It could take as long as four hours or as short as one. He said, we won't know until we get inside and assess the damage that has been done to that area. He said, the real problem here, I don't know. I don't know who's doing the surgery. He said he was wheeled in approximately 4 p.m. Eastern time, and that's when the surgery began shortly afterwards. I do know that 30 units of O negative blood were rushed up to the presidential operating area for use. They cross-matched the president's blood uh, before they wheeled him up. He will be on a respirator during surgery because the problem you have here is much like flying a twin-engine plane. You've got a problem on the right engine, you feather it, meaning his left lung is collapsed. The right lung now has to do double duty. And the people that I've talked to say it's a very fine line. They've got to oxygenate the right lung and keep it fully inflated while they assess the damage done to the left lung area. They will introduce some blood clotting agents into the bloodstream to try to assist in stemming the blooding, the, uh, the, the blood flow. If that doesn't work, the doctor told me they've got a real problem. But he said there's no reason to believe now that they can't repair the damage done to him. Up until the time of the surgery, was the president conscious and did he make any statements I do not know. I don't know of his test. I was, I was outside the, the scan room when Jim Brady was wheeled out. The only sign of life I could see as Jim Brady went past was a portable EKG unit on the foot of his stretcher, which showed a good, strong heartbeat. It was not a very pretty sight to see. Did the president go into shock? I don't know, but the doctor spoke of, of, of a traumatic situation. He said, I asked him about the chances of survival for the president. He said that in a situation like this, you've got a 70-year-old man who is admittedly in good condition. But were it just a cyst that had to be removed in open chest surgery, it would be serious enough. The fact that he has a bullet wound and a traumatic wound and causing the lung to collapse, this complicates the problem. It's not insurmountable, but it is serious. And they would say no more beyond that. They wouldn't give me a condition report or anything else. Any He's in surgery now. Bullets? Beg your pardon? Any idea how many bullets? In the president, they only talked of one bullet. And I don't know whether it exited the back or was still in his body. They didn't speak of that. They didn't know. Did you see or hear anything from the first lady? Was she with I didn't see her. I was thrown off of that suite area at 420. And I was told they were closing the hospital at 420. There would be no more people allowed in that area at all. How do you spell your name? S I M. P-S-O-N, first name Ross, R-O-S-S. Mutual Broadcasting System. All of your information is one intern. Beg your pardon? All the information about both Brady and the president from one intern? No, the information I got was from a staff member at the hospital who is friends with the senior medical officer in charge of the operation. He was a staff member or a... A doctor, he was a doctor. And the man who saw the CAT scan was an intern who was assigned to that department and heard about it and was able to penetrate his department and to see the scans. I will tell you this, that the, uh, the uh, medical officer in charge of that uh, scan room, I spoke to him twice and he would give me nothing, but I overheard a conversation when he came out and he instructed the people who made the actual uh, photographs of Brady's head to make additional copies and seal them and put them in a safe because he said we're going to need those down the road at a later date. Did he did not elaborate. Who actually worked on the president? No. The information I got was simply secondhand, and that was again from this officer who uh, this medical officer, this doctor who had been able to go in and talk to people who had worked on the president and said that uh, you know he was on the respirator, it was facilitating his breathing, that he was taken into surgery at about 4 o'clock Eastern Time. The result of the wound was a collapsed lung? The, lung? The, bullet, the bullet passed uh, one inch from the heart. I mean, sorry, the bullet passed on the left side of the lung one inch from the heart and caused bleeding from the side of the lung to the outer body wall. And that caused the uh, lung to collapse. It just simply deflated it. This is the, the doctor whose friend was the senior medical officer there, and he was the one who said that uh, this is how close it came to him. Do we know the name of the senior medical officer? No, he did not, did not 
you know, identify him or himself? Beg pardon? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This was on, uh, the CAT scan room was 1310, so I assume it was third floor. And I'm told, I asked on the way out if, if uh, Reagan and Brady were being operated on in the same area. They said, well, the OR, they have adjoining suites there. It could very possibly be in the same area, although not in the same room. And they didn't know whether it was on, they were on two or on three. Now, the other fellow told me that Reagan was on three and so was Brady because Brady was taken down around one side of the cubicle and Reagan was apparently taken out a side door and down the other side of the aisle uh, where we couldn't see him. For Brady? Yeah. The intern who saw the CAT scans, the pictures of Brady's uh, cranium and the, the, the skull area, said that the prognosis was not good. The pictures did not look good. There was just too much damage in the cranium and the brain area. And that was as far as he would go. Mrs. Br I, I was behind Mrs. Brady as she went up and she kept asking just a battery of questions. How's Jim? How's Jim? Where, you know, where's the president? Where is this? Where is that? And they finally got her... They f no, she was, she was very, very calm. They, the, a surgeon came out and sat down at the end of the hall about 10 feet away and, and was, you know, gestating to her, showing her, you know, what was happening, what they were trying to do to him. And at that point, she began crying, just very, very lightly. Uh, a lady was with her. I assume one of the White House staff was there. And they were taken to a room just down from the scan room. And that's where she is, as far as I know. Did you see if Brady was in surgery or not? Brady's in surgery. Beg your pardon? I don't know. I don't. I've heard. You know. I've heard live reports, and I, I just don't know. Beg your pardon, Chris. I got it secondhand, and this came from a staff member at the hospital, whose friend attended the president, and he told him. Beg your pardon? He didn't want his name used. So he is not lost, is that correct? Beg your pardon? The, the friend of the, of the staff member you keep referring to is a doctor. Yes, he is a doctor, and he's on, he's on staff at the hospital. And everything you have told us, the source of it is this person. Is from him, and then... the exception of the intern and the CAT scan. The CAT scan, yes. No, I saw a picture of it from about 10 feet. I could not tell. It was, it was shadowed, so you don't have backlight, so you can't tell. Who? I didn't, I didn't uh, inquire further than that. I saw no members of the clergy up on the operating floor. If you could please be seated. Lynn Singer's in route over here now to do the first briefing. Everyone could please be... All right, well, you've just seen the tape. It, uh, I need to kind of put it in perspective again. That man is Ross Simpson of Mutual Broadcasting. He was on the third floor of George Washington Hospital here in Washington when both the president uh, and Mr. Brady and the Secret Service agent and the Washington policeman were apparently all brought in. And just to summarize what he said, which again is based on secondhand testimony that he has from a doctor who gave it to him. He would not identify the doctor by name. Basically, it boils down to this. The president seems to be doing well. However, the doctor pointed out he is, albeit in excellent condition, nevertheless a 70-year-old man. Uh, and they're engaging, they're engaging in major surgery on him right now. So the president's condition good, but guarded. Uh, as for the condition of Jim Brady, quoting, this is Ross Simpson of Mutual now, quoting the, uh, the surgeon, the prognosis is not good. Few people survive such a wound. Uh, let me just point out, if I may, one other thing that we should remind them. That, that was a videotape uh, that we just saw. And at 5.25 you know, this afternoon, less than about half an hour or so ago, 
we had a uh, direct report from the White House, from Larry Speaks, that the president was still in surgery, but the doctors then had assured Mrs. Reagan that his condition is good. That, that's the, really the last official word that right. we've had. All right, again, we have uh, another piece of tape now, this of the alleged assailant, John W. Hinckley, as he was being brought to D.C. police headquarters. You will see him, I am told, in the second car. There's the first one, so watch this next car coming into your, onto your screen right now. This again is videotape. He was being brought over to D.C. police headquarters. Shortly after 2.30 this afternoon. That's the uh, picture of Hinckley's driver's license. If you were able to see anything, uh, you're... Uh, well, you're a little bit faster yeah. than I was. I didn't, I didn't see a thing. I saw two cars coming through the rain. It's been drizzling here most of the afternoon in, in Washington, but Hinckley is now over at D.C. Police Headquarters. He is from Evergreen, Colorado, 22 years old, uh, and he is the man who allegedly took, what, uh, four or five shots now, Frank? Have they, have they decided on the number? I'm sorry, Ted. I was being told something else in my ear. Uh, well, Go anyway, ahead. No, four, right. four, four, four or five shots. Uh, oh, at least, well, we know at least four. And we had pictures earlier of uh, one uh, damage to the presidential limousine. So uh, we know that it must have been at least five and quite possibly six uh, shots that were uh, fired. And it was a uh, 22 like caliber, 22 caliber hand. Earlier reports that it was 38 caliber and then uh, subsequently it was uh, said that it was probably a 22. We also had a report earlier, uh, Ted, from a Secret, uh, Secret Service spokesman who said it appears that uh, the alleged assailant, uh, John Warnock Hinckley, acted alone. Uh, the implication is that there was no conspiracy or that there was nobody else involved, but of course it's quite early to make any kind of a judgment about uh, motivation or the circumstances of the, uh, of the shooting this afternoon. We understand now that our correspondent Tom Schell is standing by uh, in Sherman Oaks, California, the home of uh, Michael Reagan, the uh, eldest son of uh, President Reagan. Hello, Tom. Go ahead. Frank, uh, we have been here now for about uh, three hours. Michael Reagan arrived just 15 minutes ago. We had had conflicting reports as to whether he was even in the house, but a Secret Service car with Michael Reagan in sped up here 15 minutes ago, and he uh, hurriedly rushed into the house. We assume that he is getting ready to uh, take off to Washington. Activity here has been pretty slow uh, much of the afternoon. There's been four or five people arrive at the house, people that uh, we did not recognize. We understood that one is a business associate of Michael Reagan's, but uh, his son, uh, two and a half year old Cameron did sneak out of the house at a back door at about a half an hour after we arrived here. Uh, the uh, boy came around, toddled down the driveway, the Secret Service corralled him and then took him back in the house after letting him look at uh, all of the reporters who have uh, gathered out here. There's uh, probably a group of 30 or 40 of us uh, who have gathered here outside Michael Reagan's house. We've had no comment from inside the house at all. Uh, Michael Reagan, was, as we said, was in a great rush uh, when he got here, uh, just ran into the house in through the back door, and we have not had any chance to question him so far. Frank? question him about either is there uh, no, I was I was about to say I suspect that Michael Reagan is probably sitting there watching television and yes. trying to trying to get the information uh, even as we're trying to give it to all of you sure. um, he's a uh, he uh, really has uh, had a great time during the campaign during the uh, political campaign he used to go out and uh, speak for his uh, father he didn't uh, didn't accompany him but he uh, you know on the campaign uh, plane itself but he uh, would go out and uh, have a, uh, a grand time giving speeches. He didn't work very extensively, but he kind of liked it. Uh, always seemed to enjoy it. Uh. Well, we have uh, nothing really to tell you at uh, eight minutes to six, except that the President of the United States, so far as we know, is still in surgery. He was shot on the left side of the chest this afternoon at uh, shortly after 2.30 in Washington as he came out of a hotel after delivering an address to the Building Trades Council of the AFL-CIO. Also wounded with the president and more grievously than Mr. Reagan apparently was Jim Brady, the White House press secretary who suffered a head wound and is described as in very critical condition. A Secret Service agent, uh, Tim McCarthy, was also hurt and uh, he is said to be in uh, better condition and a uh, District of Columbia police officer named Delahanty, uh, John Delahanty I believe it is, uh, is said to be in serious condition. So there have been four people wounded here this afternoon, including the President of the United States. And uh, we wait now for word 
from the hospital, really, from George Washington University Hospital, where they all were taken, for further word on the condition of all of them. Frank, I'd, I'd just like to inject two points. One, we have uh, a comment from former President Gerald Ford, who himself, as you were saying earlier, was once the victim of an attempted assassination uh, uh, two, really. Yeah. Two, that's right, although he was unhurt in either one of them. Uh, a spokesman, Bob Barrett, for the former president, said that uh, Ford expressed grave concern for the president and his personal support for Mrs. Reagan, and that former President Ford will continue to monitor the situation. One other thing I just wanted to mention at this point, because uh, it is one of, the, uh, one of the truly, if there is anything positive to be said about a situation like this, it is how the Republic continues to function and function in a very orderly fashion. The man who would stand in for President Reagan, uh, if that was necessary, and it's not always necessary that the president be totally incapacitated. You remember back in the 1950s uh, when Vice President Richard Nixon stood in for then ailing President Dwight Eisenhower. That man, George Bush, the vice president, is on his way back here to Washington. Should be arriving, what, in about an hour from Texas? Uh, about 6.30, we're told, about 35 minutes. All right, so about yeah. 35 minutes from now. And uh, he, of course, will then be in a position, in a position to take over the constitutional duties of president. But that decision has not yet been made. All he would be doing is taking over the job uh, to which he was appointed, in fact, just a few days ago. And that seemed like such an enormous story uh, earlier last week. Uh, when there was the struggle between Al Haig and, and George Bush, who would be taking over the, uh, the crisis unit. Well, of course, we are in the middle of a crisis right now, and George Bush will be, will be taking that role when he arrives here in Washington. In the interim, the next man constitutionally, behind the vice president, the secretary of state, Alexander Haig, is at the White House and uh, has been at the White House all uh, afternoon also monitoring the situation and, and being in, in marginal control. I say marginal only because the president himself is uh, still in literal control of the country. The man who took the videotapes that you've been watching time and again this afternoon, uh, one of our cameramen, Hank Brown, is in a studio downstairs and we're going to have an opportunity to talk to him now and get, he was possibly one of the closest eyewitnesses to what was going on I this think afternoon. I the bullets had to go right by him, Ted. Uh, the, the gunman had to be right behind him. Well, there's, his right. there, there's Hank true? right now. Hank, wasn't he behind you and to your right? The uh, gunman was to my right. He was on the press line. He was about the third person over from me at that particular time. Did you, uh, was there any reason at all for him to attract your attention before the president came out? We had a lot of problems earlier uh, for the arrival. There were um, the gist of it. ordinary people up on the press line, and uh, we thought that was cleared out when we came out for the departure, and it was not. There were a lot of people up there. It was about maybe 50 to 60 people there. They and were, you, you mean in an area that what you believed uh, had been set aside for the press? That's correct. But uh, citizens uh, who were not members of the press That's wandered correct. in there. It was not secured. It was the average citizen there up on the press line. Did you notice this fellow at all, Hank? I uh, did not notice the fellow at all, no. I didn't notice him until the shots rung out. Hank, all of us at one time or another, of course, have, have covered stories like this and have covered the president. And normally, the, the Secret Service and the police are rather cautious about isolating the press, isolating the cameramen, making sure that... Uh, uh, that everyone has their IDs prominently displayed. Why not in this case? Do you, do you have any sense that, uh, that there was any laxness at all? It was, the uh, press line was set up. We set up on the press line and the, uh, the uh, people engulfed us once we set up there. They moved a few people back, but they did not move all the people back. And it was just a mob of people there. It was totally unusual and it, it usually never happens. They usually have us separated from the rest of the uh, public. When, when did well, you, Hank, when did you first become aware of the fact that there was actually an attempt on the president? You seemed to react very, very quickly. The Secret Service seemed to react very, very quickly. But there must have been that, that moment of wondering what was going on. Well, the president, since the president uh, appeared out of the uh, presidential door of Hilton, the crowd applauded and cheers and everything was, was loud and, 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 and very exuberant for the president. He turned and he waved, he smiled. He was um, dead center in front of my camera at that particular time. He was put in one more wave, one more smile, was bending over 
to get into the uh, presidential limousine when shots rung out. There were rapid fire, four shots rapidly fired. And that's when everyone was, Secret Service, police officers, were falling all over the place. And I was at the time going down trying to get some area of security for myself. And as I turned is, is when the uh, press secretary was going down. But he was more or less taking cover at the time. When I turned the direction of, of the, the shots, uh, that's when the Secret Service also grabbed the, the gunman and the gun went off about one of, about two more times and I believe that's when the sec press secretary was hit. Well, he was no more than about five, uh, five feet away from the gunman at the time. You can uh, review the, uh, the tape, uh, Hank. We've, uh, we've shown it many, many times this afternoon and I know you'll have an opportunity to see it. Did you have the impression, I know you, you reacted instinctively, of course, when you heard these shots and saw all this commotion, but you moved your camera immediately to your right where the police and the Secret Service were swarming all over this, uh, this assailant. Uh, did you have the impression at the time that the president was all right? I mean, that they just bundled him into the car and pushed him away? Here is the tape now, Hank. Uh, your tape. This is where he was waving. He yes. turned away to the people. And he was about to get, that's when the shots fired. He, right there, the, you can't see it in this shot. They had the gun on the ground and were kicking it over about right there. And that's right down there to your left, right in front of the uh, Secret Service agent is Bradley. And that's where he was shot in the head. Now that gun, Hank, that we see, I think a little bit later, lying right by Jim Brady's head, that then is the gun that was used in the attack. Yes, that's correct. It was kicked over there by It was kicked over there by one of the agents. And this is Mr. Brady now, uh, Jim Brady, in the foreground here. Uh, the police Did officer is standing right there, is lying on the ground right next to him. The top of the picture is the Secret Service. That's Brady right there, and there's yes. the weapon. That's the, the weapon. It, it may be the officer's weapon, because the officer was turning to fire, and uh, was turning to draw his gun, and he was immediately hit. Or oh, the agent, yes. Yeah. Or oh, the, the, the uh, policeman, yes. Yes. We are... The man that they are subduing here has been identified as John Warnock Hinckley, 22 years old, of Evergreen, Colorado. What you're watching is a videotape. We've just received word that uh, Howard Baker, Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee, says that uh, the president is still in surgery. That's the last word we had 35 minutes ago from the White House. And according to Senator Baker, the president will be in surgery a while longer. Well, as as we heard that Not reporter from uh, we heard that reporter from Mutual Radio quoting a doctor as saying that this kind of surgery can uh, can last as long as four hours. So uh, uh, we're unable to pinpoint uh, with uh, certainty exactly when the president went in, but I believe it was before four o'clock into uh, into surgery, three forty-five or so. So he's been in there for more than two hours now. The uh, at this time, uh, ordinarily, is at least some of our stations around the country would be watching uh, ABC's World News tonight, which is uh, not going to be seen tonight, uh, because we're going to stay right on the air with uh, this story that uh, is, of course, of uh, supreme concern to us all now, while we're waiting to find out the condition of the president and the others who were wounded in the uh, assassination attempt this afternoon. I might also point out that uh, the Academy Awards, uh, which were scheduled to be uh, telecast tonight, have been uh, postponed. Uh, for at least 24 hours and uh, will not be telecast. The Oscars will not be handed out uh, tonight and not until uh, tomorrow. The situation at the moment, the president is in surgery, has been for, according to our calculation, uh, more than two hours. Uh, doctors uh, removing a bullet that afflicted him or struck him this afternoon as he came out of the Washington Hilton Hotel. Ted, uh, Secretary of State Haig was careful to point out earlier it seems quite a long time ago now when he made his one appearance in the press room that no alert uh, was anticipated, none had been ordered. I wonder if that, of course you can't say what is customary in situations of this kind, but I always kind of assumed that there would be a sort of a one stage of heightened readiness. Uh, I, I have a feeling that, yeah. uh, that something like that has probably happened, uh, but again, there is no reason to believe that anyone other than uh, 
the yes. and, and we have to keep saying it if it sounds cumbersome our apologies but uh, the alleged assailant john w hinckley there there is no reason to believe that anyone else was involved or that any uh, foreign uh, or that any foreign all right i'm i'm sorry i'm being told that dr dominic de mayo who was a former medical examiner in the city of new york is now standing by uh, the chief uh, medical examiner of the city of New York, Dr. DeMeo, is now standing by in our New York studios. And perhaps Dr. DeMeo would be good enough to, uh, on the basis...